Welcome everyone to this most amazing summit. We're gathered together in Sacred Circle to honor and celebrate the different contributions that women are making all over the world to the field of sacred activism, wild earth wisdom, and global <laughs> healing. And especially how those three things, those three areas that we're all really immersed in or feel called towards, how they all interconnect and weave together and create can create something that is absolutely amazing. I'm Alison Palmer, I am your host, and I am thrilled today to introduce you to Beth Birkins. Now, please read her bio underneath here because then you'll understand, you know, what she's been doing and what she's bringing to our sacred table today. But I am going to just say a few words to give you a little bit of context. So Beth is an international best-selling author. She's a teacher of shamanism. She's a vision quest guide. Nearly didn't say that correctly. She's, you know, been on, on authority for over 30 years. She's been on TV. She's been working throughout the world. And she's just so immersed in really empowering women to just be all that we can be, you know, and break through those invisible barriers so we can mm -hmm. connect and live our soul's purpose. So, and today we're going to do something phenomenal. It's journeying through the visionary doorway, shamanism, spirits of place, and deep ecology. Welcome, Beth. Well, thank you, Ellison. It's great to be here from California. And thank you for that beautiful, beautiful introduction. Okay, well, like I said, this is going to be so brilliant today, and I know that we're going to start off in a very specific way, so I'm going to hand it over to you so that we can do that. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. So I want to welcome everybody who's watching us here today. Thank you for choosing this particular talk experience to come to. So as Allison said, I'm Beth, and I thought you know, there's so many essays and articles and books and movies we can watch about what's happening with planet Earth, our great mother. But I would like to start by giving you an experience and let's just really <clears throat> set the energy for this whole time that we have together here. So I'd like you, if you're comfortable, if you're not driving your car, all right, pull over to a rest stop. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, all right, <clears throat> for just a few minutes, if you're comfortable with that. You know, I'm a teacher of shamanism and have been teaching it for over 30 years now. And I know having an experience of a place on the earth, a sacred place that you know that you love, can just feed the soul and feed the spirit and feed the heart and feed this incredible summit. So let's do that now. I'm going to invite you to remember a place that you are familiar with. You've been here and it's a sacred place. Maybe not, you know, sacred in terms of Stonehenge or something in National Geographic, but for you, it might be a beach on Kauai with black sand. It might be a meadow that was full of lupins one spring. For you, it's sacred. You were there. Take yourself in your wonderful imagination right back there. Feel your feet on the earth here in this place. Smell the smells in the air. Notice if there's a breeze and what the temperature is. Maybe you're in a grove of redwood trees. You know where you are. Just bring yourself here fully. Feet on the earth head in the sky, like the cosmic tree of life that we work with in shamanism, that connects the three worlds. Really feel yourself here and take a nice deep breath with me, if you would. This pure air and just let go of anything that you want to let go of this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whatever time zone you're in, just let it go and just be here and the beauty 
incredible sacred beauty of Mother Earth. And while you are being here, I'm going to share with you a very ancient prayer that comes from the Sami people in Lapland, the far north of Sweden, Denmark. Finland. These people are the reindeer people and they have a long, long standing shamanic tradition and understanding. Just keep yourself here in this sacred place where you've landed on the earth. The earth is a circle. The moon is a circle. The sun is a circle. The drum is a circle. Birds build their nests in circles. We are a circle. We share an interdependence with all of life. And we have a unity with all things. And here you are in this <clears throat> beautiful sacred spot on the earth, feeling that unity, perhaps feeling your interdependence with all of the natural world around you. So I want to talk with you today about some very, very, very special things like the shaman's net of power. And you're standing right there in that net of power right now. There's earth, there's sky, there may be birds, trees, California poppies, the ocean, wherever you are. There's this vast net of power that we work with in shamanism, you may have heard the term the cosmic web of life. And look how easily, my friend, that you just stepped into this. You just slid right in. It's that easy to get reconnected with the power of everything. Everything is alive. We have that understanding in shamanism. As kids, we absolutely knew this, that everything was alive. And some of us are recovering this knowing now. <clears throat> Everything has power to offer you, connection to offer you. When you take the time and you tune in like you've just done, I want to applaud you for your transformational willingness to just step in to this experience. Bravo. You just opened your indigenous soul to nature to the spirit of this place. And today we're going to be working with the spirit of the place where you live. So thank you for the time to really set the energy here today, Allison. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. So you mentioned the um, shaman's net of power. Yeah. You talked about that. You introduced it to us. So perhaps you'd like to say more about that and um, and also how it can connect for us or how it does connect to global healing and our, our part in that. Oh, that's a fantastic question. Brilliant. Thank you. <clears throat> so this cosmic web of life, we're part of it, all the places we live and have visited, it's all part of it. In shamanism, we tend to call it the net of power. And we can just put our hands into it, like right now, just like plugging into the socket of the life force. And I do this work in my vision quest. Thank you, you got your hands in it. I love that. We got our hands in it, all right? <clears throat> I do this with um, all the vision quests that I lead. I'm leading vision quests online now. And every week there's an assignment. Go out and look at the stars. 
Just look at the stars. What constellation do you see? And oh, what's that one? Oh, maybe you don't know what that one is. Get the star app and figure out what is that constellation. Get connected with the stars. You know, what does Carl Sagan say? That we're like 98% stardust? You know, we're, we're stars. We're, we're golden. We're, we're alive. And, you know, we're part of this. There are ancestors in some sense where we came from. And another part of the net of power, of course, are the birds. What are the birds right in your neighborhood? <clears throat> it's just so surprising that so many people, they hear them, but they don't really connect with them, right? Bird medicine, we call it in shamanism. They are, they're like the, <clears throat> the magi, the, the magicians. They bring messages to us. And to be able to just get plugged in to, I'm looking at oak trees across the street, the live oak and <clears throat> the Monterey pines that are probably 200 years old. And if I go like this, I see the Monterey Bay, you know, where the whales are and the dolphins and the otters. And it is possible to intentionally get connected to all of life. Because, you know, we drive and, oh, there's a hawk, but so what? You know, I got to get to work kind of thing, you know, to just take time five minutes every morning or maybe five minutes in the evening, make an evening ritual out of it. Go out. I have my vision questers do night vigils <clears throat> and I ask them, go sit for two hours out in the dark and they go, what? <laughs> and then they do it and they go, wow, I had no idea. And they come back so empowered, right? But we can do this for five minutes in the morning. Go watch the rising sun. What happens at dawn? Who are the spirits who show up at dawn? What's that energy like, you know? This is all part of our indigenous soul. We know this in our cells, in our atoms, and in our membranes, and in our bones. We haven't lost this. We've just kind of forgotten and we're in the process of recovering it, right? So the shaman's net of power is, it's, it's right here, but we need to intentionally get plugged into that again. And when we do, we gather power for ourselves, but we also make the connection. And one of the shamans who I worked with for many years, Don Jose Matsua, he was Huichol and lived down in the Sierra Madre in Mexico. He lived to be 112 years old. He was only like, you know, maybe four foot two in height. But man, the power, that guy was so plugged in to the net of power, to the cosmic web of life. Um, he did very powerful healings for people and would travel up to the college where I was teaching in Santa Cruz. And we had this giant teepee over on the other side of campus. and. <clears throat> we'd light a fire and he'd lay out the altar and he'd have his prayer feathers and I mean we would just really we would get so connected again to this net of power this web of life and he said some things that I want to share here today if I may mm -hmm. that I think are really going to be like the heartbeat of, of this this is beyond a conversation Ellison this is like I don't know a cosmic connection that you and I are having here and you know, we're letting everybody else come in and, and listen as well. So <clears throat> Don Jose, he said, many people are caught up in their own little lives. And that includes me. I get so caught up, you know, I've got to make the dog's food and then I've got to answer these emails and, oh, you know, there's this phone call, this wonderful woman I want to talk with and and I'm working on my new e-course, Become Unstoppable, and I want to record that lesson three about power. You know, we get caught up. And Don Jose went on to say, when that happens, when we just get caught up, we're not getting our love up to the sun. And out to the ocean. And into the earth. And when we do ceremony, as simple as going out and watching the rising sun and just listening, who's the first bird who sings in your neighborhood? 
what happens with the light on the trees and on the ocean? You know, that band of orange on the horizon. And what happens with you when that band comes into you, when you do simple ceremony? This brings life force into you. And we want this life force. You know, we've all had soul loss. <clears throat> and of course, the earth herself has had soul loss. And this is like a mini way of kind of soul retrieval, bringing that life force, that soul of life back into us. And then he goes on to say, thanking the earth, thanking the gods and the goddesses, Tatehara Mara, the ocean, as we told for the ocean, the, the sea mother, thanking the sun for your life, for your life. I wouldn't be here without all of this. I couldn't even be alive, right? To really take time and remember the source, with a capital S, the source of your life. And the sun certainly is a source for us, right? <clears throat> we know what happened to the dinosaurs when that sun was eclipsed for I don't know how many years, right? So to really do ceremony, take time, and he suggested what, what I have always done since he gave this ceremony to us. He suggested, if you can, go to the ocean. And they would do pilgrimages that were like 300 miles from way up here where they live, down into the sea. And he said, bring a candle, bring some chocolate, and bring some coins. You know, whether they're French francs or Swiss francs or pennies or dimes. Mineral, it's about returning mineral to the earth because so much has been taken out. And right where the water, and you can do this with a river, of course, you've got rivers up there in France where you are, right? In the Pyrenees and um, a pond of water also works. Right where the, the water meets, touches the land, right where the waves come in and touch the sand, that's a place of power. It's called a margin in shamanism. Another time I'll talk more about that, but just know that is a place of power. That's where you put the candle and light it and say, thank you for my life. That's where you put the chocolate. That's where you drop the coins. And you, you feed everything around you in this way. You make offerings. Prayer arrows also <clears throat> are put in the same place. Another time I'll talk about prayer arrows as I do in my shamanism courses. So you were asking me about the shaman's net of power. And this led me to talk about, you know, a little more deeply about our connections to all of life and how we want to source what is there and return to the earth and to the sun and to the sea, our gratitude, our thanksgiving for life itself. And this, this circle, the sun is a circle. The moon is a circle. We are a circle. We have this unity with all of life. I think this is really so much of what is missing yeah. in the world today. And, you know, I'm so grateful to you for this summit that you're putting on where we're talking about the wild earth and we're talking about women and what can we do to restore and to heal. This is one of the pieces, mm -hmm. doing ceremony. I just want to interject a moment because, you know, uh, it's just so amazing and beautiful what you're saying. But uh, what kept coming and coming and coming to me was it started, I think, when you said about you send um, the people who are doing the vision questing with you to go out and spend time two hours out at night by themselves and um and i just thought about that and i thought well when i go out at night to take my dog out right. if it's a full moon it's a very different experience from if it's if there's no moon or if it's just a, a you know a new brand new moon or whatever and so I, that just really made me conscious that you know there's it's so rich isn't it if we move into the cycles of the seasons and and you know so we've got the days as well you know you can do ceremony in the morning or at night or at 
at dusk or daybreak whenever and right. then we've got this the changing seasons as well and the changing moon and all of these elements which make each experience so very different and so mm -hmm. it just seemed to me like you know there's just it's so rich that's i think what it rich. is that connection rich. yes it's vast mm -hmm. it's vast you think you know we're stardust and we're ocean salt water and you know we we are nature and we're connecting with source where we came from reconnecting and how that fuels us motivates us to do each in our own way you know healing for the earth mm -hmm. yes and what about something else that's just come to me is um in doing this i feel that there's um the the healing for each of us can be something that is um is subtle in its incrementality but profound in its you know in the movement that it has for us and we might what i'm trying to say is we might not be we might not notice particularly the deep effect it's having upon our lives immediately and i I'm, i said that because i suddenly thought oh my goodness you know I have really changed in the in myself how I sit with the world because of largely the lot of these conversations that we've been having in the summit and how that has allowed me to deepen into this mm -hmm. you know the, as you as you say the the net of power that deep connection with with everything and that gratitude, the real gratitude, and it's a movement from the head and trying to thinking about healing, even on an individual level is I'm going to go out and do this because I'm going to heal myself. And then looking for some, you know, well, how have I changed? You know, do I feel any better? And, and it's about, we don't even have to consider that just by doing it and being in that process we is things are going to happen to us and we don't even need to we it's not it's not like we're measuring them i think that's what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. that's a very very good point we don't have to measure them we are you know we've got this logical part of our brain and we want to go oh yeah that worked and that worked and that worked it's it is more subtle than that for most people mm -hmm. and Sometimes there are miracle cures that happen when I, you know, send people out into the natural world. I mean, revelations can happen. So, yeah, we just go with the flow and, and over time, it is definitely cumulative and healing does happen on an individual basis. And I think on a global basis and also on this local basis you know where where we live where we reside where we have our homes and i was hoping to talk about the incredible importance of the spirits of place and the spirits of nature right where we each live to remember this place where we're living even if it's an apartment building in new york city there's probably trees you know down at the street level there's certainly stars up above. Um, there are birds, you know, falcons, peregrine falcons are nesting on the ledges and the balconies of high rise apartments because they're safe up there, right? They're, yeah, and this is in Amsterdam too. I, when I visited Amsterdam as a university student, I, I couldn't quite believe my eyes when a peregrine falcon flew by me. And then a bit later, I found one of its feathers which I've had with me for 50 years. Yeah, they, they have learned to adapt and find their way, right? The peregrine, the fastest bird on earth. So to remember this place that we're living in uh, makes a huge difference in our own personal healing and also in our relationship with this net of power that we've been talking about, the shaman's net of power. So <clears throat> just to give a few very simple, concrete examples, right, of um, 
how you can work with your own web of life right where you are, right where you're living. Um, the first would be to build a, a very simple medicine wheel. And I, I work with the medicine wheel. In fact, tonight I'm with my Shaman's Visionary Pathways group and I'm teaching them how to lay out a medicine wheel. Um, it can be very simple, just with five stones, five river rocks, five ocean stones, five mountain rocks, like from Mount Shasta or Mount Hood or Mount Rainier or wherever you are, the Pyrenees, five rocks from the Pyrenees, um, and, you know, bringing them home and finding a place, hopefully, you know, on, on the earth where you live. If not, then a, a table that you dedicate to this. And you, you, um, you, you, you probably know where the sun rises, right? Most people know where the sun comes up. Some people don't. So just use a, a compass on your iPhone and find, well, where's the east? And then you'll know how to orient the east and then the south rock and then the west rock and the north rock and the center stone. It's the rudimentary medicine wheel and it helps just to orient yourself inside your house or outside your house to know, well, this is where the sun comes up. Oh, okay, well, that's where the full moon is going to rise then, right? It's going to come up in the east. And this is, you know, the warm part of the day, the place of growth on the medicine wheel of the south. And this is um, the place of where the sun goes down, the place of introspection, the west rock. So you can build a medicine wheel that's maybe just this big. And you know, we've all got room in our house for that. And then the center stone, of course, represents... Um, grandmother Earth, Grandfather Sky, you know, Great Spirit, the center of all. Having something that rudimentary and powerful in the backyard or in the home just helps orient you to the place where you live. I remember when I moved from Mount Shasta to Ashland, Oregon, I was so disoriented because there was no Mount Shasta where I was living. My poetry went into kind of a dormancy because I didn't have that power that I was working with. I was living between the Siskiyou Mountains and the Cascade Range and in this beautiful long rogue valley and I was so disoriented. And um, one, one evening I stepped out on my back porch and I looked up in the sky and there was the Big Dipper. And everything changed for me in that moment. I knew where the North Star was then, because there's the Big Dipper, and the top edge points right to the North Star. And I thought, okay, I'm home now. And then, of course, above that is the Little Dipper, and it just goes on and on around the whole heavens. <laughs> Something simple like that makes such a difference in terms of, I don't know, the inner compass inside of the body, knowing where we are on the earth. So creating a very simple medicine wheel, five stones, Email me if that went too fast and you, you want a little more direction. I can send you a picture. Do they have my email address? Um, no, why don't you just say it now? Okay, well, Beth, B-E-T-H, B -E -T -H, at BethBerkins.com. Berkins is B-E-U-R-K-E-N-S. Uh, I learned Medicine Wheel many years ago with Evelyn Eaton who, you know, was an incredible shaman and medicine woman, and wrote a book called I Send a Voice. I got to work with her. And so I, I love passing this on. As I said, I'm teaching this tonight for the first time to my group. So if I can help you with it, it's so powerful, these five stones. And another piece that I wanted to share is in terms of, you know, bringing us home, grounding us with the powers right where we live is to build a cairn. And this is a European tradition, right? Up in the Alps and, and everywhere, these big rock cairns that are, you know, directional. Here, this is how you get to St. Moritz. Oh, this is how you get to the Matterhorn. Um, this is how you get to the Pyrenees, where, you know, somewhere Allison lives over there, right? <laughs> uh, so Pachamama, I've worked a lot in the Peruvian shamanism tradition with a great shaman, Juan Nunez del Prado, and um, learned 
pretty much all of the ceremonies and the rituals and the healing methods inside of Peruvian shamanism. And Pachamama is their name for what we might call Gaia, the Earth Mother. Many, many, many names for the Earth Mother, all right? So you can build a cairn, and we did this in up in um, Schwabenalp when I was teaching up there in Switzerland um, one summer. I had the women each bring like four stones, and it was a, a great ceremony. We actually built a rock cairn dedicated to Pachamama. And, you know, it can be small if you want to have this, you know, out in your backyard, or it can be large. And you leave like a crack open where you can put offerings in. And it goes right down in the cairn, right down to the earth. And, you know, it's again what Don Jose Matsu was talking about, feeding the earth. How do we feed the earth? I like blue cornmeal. I'm just very partial to the blue cornmeal from the Hopi people. So, so the color alone is just stunning. Um, coins. Um, the women brought very special objects, pieces of mineral and oh one woman was getting a divorce and she brought her wedding rings and she put them in that opening just gave them back to the earth um, people brought um, different kinds of simple foods you know dried foods like in europe well you know this you're in europe the the traditional offering the old traditional offering in shamanism is oatmeal so we had you know a bowl of dried oats in China, it might be rice. And you know, there was offerings into, these, into this hole down to actually feed the earth. And it's a, a permanent kind of um, offering place. And a lot of women really like that, having their own permanent, they don't have to go to Lourdes, they don't have to go to Mount Shasta, they don't have to go up to you know, Denali to make offerings, you can do it right at home right with your own part of the earth, um, with the spirit of the earth right there. Can I ask you a little bit about the can? Because um, when you said it initially, I just had a vision of randomly placed um, stones on top of each other, mm -hmm. which is what how I've seen them as just markers along the mountains, you know, the Pyrenean right, Mountains. Right. But you're actually talking about... Um, a, a more intentional um, yes. Yes. collection of stones and rocks? Yes. Every rock is, you know, with like a prayer or gratitude or thanksgiving. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my home. Thank you for the healing that my daughter just received. Thank you for my dog. Thank you for the food in her home. Thank you for, you know, all of the various things that we have. Everything is like... Um, in gratitude to her. So it's all about her, and then it comes to this peak, this kind of peak, with this opening in it where the offerings are made. And it's a great thing to do with um, a circle of women, actually, if there's somebody who's got a piece of land. and But also, I think it's something important to have at home. I um, The last one I built, it was all with stones from Mount Shasta because I've led pilgrimages up on Mount Shasta and spent a lot of time up there. And this had this huge collection of lava rocks, all different colors. And yes, it's magical to have it. And you step out in the backyard with your dog and there's the cairn and you just, you know, kind of instinctively say, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you for my life. And you build that net of power. You strengthen it, right? Strengthen your relationship with where you live and what is around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really love that. I'm really feeling into the net element here. And what you just said, just really just, I was right there. Cool. Right, you know, that the nets are many stranded and they're all interconnected not like um things just going out from the center like this you know it's just so connected and it just covers everything um so yes yeah so i love that and how just by doing that 
I love the idea of having um, a can, a personal can. Um, and I'm guessing as well, you know, yours is rocks from Mount Shasta, but, you know, if I go out into my land here, you know, the, the earth is going to going to just give me stones anyway. So, and then yes. if I start looking, there's, there's yes. stuff that's already around me. And yes, your ones from Mount Shasta are beautiful, but these ones, they're beautiful as well in their own. Right. So, yeah, they're granite or they're sedimentary or, you know, like, you know, up on Riggy, the Riggy above um, the Lake of Lucerne, where I did a lot of teaching way up on the Riggy Mountain. They were conglomerate rocks, extraordinary rocks, right? Metamorphic with some other kinds of rocks and then others melded in and it's a whole new kind of rock. Yeah, there's amazing rocks wherever we are. Yeah, yeah. All... And so ancient as well. So... Yes, like the bones, mm -hmm. the skeleton of the earth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just, you know, have my my clients just you know start gathering rocks we're going to also build a cairn in this particular monday night group i'm leading and they're gathering their rocks they don't know what they're going to do with them but they're just gathering their rocks and they've got their piles happening and they got their medicine wheel rocks over here and oh we're just having an incredible time of connecting and feeding our souls and of course ultimately feeding the earth feeding all of life Yes, yes, yes. Do you have any other um, uh, suggestions for us at this moment that, you, you know, uh, another way you've said cans, you've said the medicine wheel. Is there anything else that you have planned to share with us? Or? Well, not not another very simple kind of in two minutes, here it is. But you saying that just evokes in me I think it's really invaluable for all of us to know who our helping spirits are. Who is the power animal? Who is my ally? Who, who helps me? Who creates this spiritual immune defense system around me? Who, who's the animal who can guide me through my daily life? Um, very often the animal has been with us, you know, since childhood and adolescence and adulthood got us through near misses and near death experiences and illnesses and losses and all of that. And I just find that, you know, I teach shamanism and that, that, that's simple, not simple, but simple. That's one piece in shamanism. If, you know, from all the hundreds of thousands of methods of healing, that one way of getting connected to your own personal net of power. Who is the animal? These are wild animals, of course. They may be old like the woolly mammoth. They may be, the, you know, the cave lion from where you are. God, the, the caves in France. Oh my God, 30,000 year old caves, the first art, right? With the handprints and the horse heads and the bison and the, the cave bears and the altars of cave bears, you know, with the teeth and the, the skulls and up in the Swiss Alps also. Um, or, you know, maybe it's a more modern animal, a wild animal that like the lion or the grizzly bear or knowing how to connect with this animal and access and fill up with that kind of power is invaluable. Wow. And so, you know, um, I have this new e-course that women have been asking for. I want a course, give me something I can do on my own where I don't have to come every Monday night or every Wednesday night or Saturday mornings or, you know, I want to know how I can get plugged in to this net of power. And you mentioned invisible barriers when we started. I love that you said that because there are these invisible barriers. So in this new e-course of mine, we learn how to create a vision of what we really love for our lives. I mean, no holds barred. Just really see it, step into it, and launch, you know, that, that kind of vision arrow. And then we explore, okay, well, what doubts come up? Well, I don't really believe that could happen, or oh, who do I think I am? You know, all these things, we sometimes call them paradigms, right? Mm 
the old story, the old limits. We got the we're moving ahead, and then suddenly we got the brakes on, and we delay, and we we talk ourselves out of it. How to work with that? And then the next session is meeting and working with your own power animal helper, just really getting charged up. Really, it's like more than energy. It's the power of the universe. You asking me, is there another technique? And I would say, I don't know, of all of them, of all of them, I think it's the most important to know who that animal is and to build a partnership with it and work with it in daily life. In the activism that we're doing and the personal healing work that we're doing, really in the raising of kids and just everything knowing who that power animal is and yeah I would I would love to you know have women have access to this course become unstoppable I don't know if this is the moment to talk just a little bit more about that yes why don't you um I just wanted to feed in though because I had this uh, big feeling Please. come up again which was just about how working with your power animal and building that deep relationship is a mm -hmm. completely different way to operating in the world um, than coming from our head or even just even just a sense of how sometimes we work with our heart, but we work with our heart as a, as a kind of a separate entity. And this co-relationship with a power animal, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, um, immediately takes us into co-creating with in a yes. very different way we're co-creating whatever we do we're co-creating with nature and it I love it that it's like could be something like a woolly mammoth like you said so it doesn't have to be like a concrete animal that we see with our eyes right now in our here and now but so it even allows to go to the past as well it connects us our, our co-creation to the past or to the future or to the other side of the world or mm -hmm. it's just expansive and yeah. I love that yes it is so expansive mm. yes so yes do share more about the the course because I know that people will be very interested in it mm -hmm. so yes thank you thank you for that opportunity so uh, I like to say that you know, the next step on your journey can be this. And I know you're going to give them the link to go look into this. Um, become Unstoppable. Five Ancient Wisdom Keys to Live Your Greatest Life. And is that what we want at this point? To live our greatest life? But how on earth do we get there? It seems so big, right? So I have these five keys or steps or shaman secrets that are very doable and you know even if you don't know where to begin and so often people want this but they don't know where to begin um you know even if they're not used to putting themselves first for example right well i'm gonna do the kids and i'm gonna do you know my partner and we're gonna do this and do that um even if you think it's too late for you it's not. This greatest life is waiting. This greater purpose, you may call it. It's waiting. Your gift that the world so needs. You know, it's like, well, how do I get into that treasure chest? How do I not doubt myself? How do I believe I can really do this? What I have is a value. So I just take women through these steps to open up that treasure chest. And you know, really hear the call. We call it a call in shamanism. Hear the call, hear what's calling to you, and really step in and receive that, answer that call, go for that call, right? It's time, it is really time um, to make a difference in the world. I think that's why so many of you are on this summit. You want to make a difference in the world. But, you know, how do we really do that? We can build a cairn, we can have a medicine wheel, we can go watch the sunrise, but then, well, what's greater? What, what is your offering going to be? All those help you 
link up with true sources of power. But if you want to go farther and you want to get to the real power, then you want to learn who is your power animal helper and how do you work with it? How do you access it? How can you bring it into your daily life and help you with all the things that you're doing? And, you know, in these times of, you know, lockdowns and shutdowns and fear and all that, the power animal just creates this a spiritual immune system of protection right around you. So, um, just a few more things of, you know, the benefits, right? Um, what, what Would you love to uncover what's been blocking you? What's been holding you back? Sometimes we call it upper limits, right? In the old days of the early women's movement, we called it the glass ceiling. I want to get through that glass ceiling. Now we're aware, oh, it's inside the glass ceiling. Oh my gosh. How do, how do I learn to kick fear to the curb? Um, you know, who is my power animal? How do I meet that force? Um, well, how do I identify? What are these limiting beliefs? And what, what can I do with them? How can I replace them and repattern the way I think about the world and draw to me, magnetize to me what I really want? and really go for this, this dream that I have for my life. So there are, you know, shamanic empowerment tools throughout this. And the way I have this set up, I just love this. Um, everything is downloadable. You can download it to your phone. You can download it to your computer. Um, if you're the kind of woman who likes to read, there's a transcript. Maybe you learn better by reading, right? There's a transcript for each of these um, sessions. There's also um, a poster of a very powerful roomy quote that you can print out, you know, have up on your wall as you're going through the course. And I think it's not enough. Somebody, one woman once asked me very pointedly, well, with your e-course and your e-stuff, how are you going to stop this being just shelf help? I thought that is so important. How am I going to stop this from being shelf help? Yeah, you get this, you listen to, you know, the first session, you go, that was great. Then it's, you know, with all the other things, right? How do you prevent that? That's really a very powerful question. Because I will also be on live. You know, there'll be a small group that will form. And I'm also offering three, what we call mastermind sessions, where I'm going to get on with you and I'm going to answer all the questions and I will take you through another experience live on just like we are now Allison on zoom and then you know I'll add another bonus um, I'd love to give you an hour private session with me a breakthrough session let's really look at what's going on here what what where are you stuck what's holding you back where would you love to get to so an hour with me so that's I think the answer to that woman's question well you don't want to miss a live session right Maybe you haven't even done all the five things, but you want to be on there, you know, with a small group of women and you want to be engaged and you want to be seen and you want to be witnessed and honored and get your questions asked, asked and answered. So um, I have a very special offer for the women who are part of this summit. You know, you've you put yourself out there, getting yourself logged in, getting to these amazing sessions and so you know I want to give back to you and say thank you for joining us in the summit usually this course sell this is in dollars this course sells for $19.95 that's $1,995 because of all the deliverables and um, because of the the one-on-one -on -one and the in-person work but for people here at the summit for the the women men both. It's open to both. I want to give you a really enormous discount and offer it to you for $4.95. And there's a link somewhere down here. You can click on it and you'll see all of the pieces that I'm talking about and more. That was just like an overview. And if you'd like to do it, go ahead and get signed up and I will deliver the first session to you you're going to love this it's it's a game changer <laughs> it, it really it invites you into your own personal healing work you know with a shamanic guide and 
a vision quest guide and a shamanic healer. So I've got your back and then we're going to meet in person, which to me is really the other component of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That is, that just sounds so amazing and so supportive and just fantastic really. And what an amazingly generous discount that you're offering for people. Yes. Yeah. So everyone, the information and links are below here. So please do follow up on that if it's speaking to you. As Beth said, you know, if you're called, what are you going to do about that call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Beth, I know that you've also got a free gift to, for people and an yes. invitation for people to donate. So yes. would you like to just speak briefly to those? I would love to. Um, I love online offerings and just making things available. So I put together this amazing meditation. I think it's maybe 12 minutes in length. It's something that you can do at home. I wouldn't do it in the car. You know, I know we've got internet in our cars now, but I would pull over into a rest stop so you can really engage with it. It's called the Garden of Your Dreams. And it's just the beginning kind of first step to um, connect with, well, what do I want for my one wild and precious life? As Mary Oliver said, right? What do I want for my life? I'm just like stumbling along like a tumbleweed going from circumstance to circumstance, just hoping my luck improves, right? Well, no, I wanna engage. I wanna be part of creating a roadmap for my life and getting plugged into this shaman's net of power. So this meditation gives you that opportunity to really tune into one thing you would really love to have in your life. And then in the meditation, you will actually create, all the supplies are right there in the meditation, you create your own vision arrow. It's like a shaman's prayer arrow. And you launch it into the cosmos. And really say to the spirits, you may not know who they are, but they know who you are, right? You just say to them, you know, I'm turning a corner here. This is my quantum leap. I'm claiming this is what I'm going for in my life. I'm tired of just settling, just like sitting back, waiting to see what happens. I'm taking the reins of my life, the reins of power, and this is my first step. It's a great place to start with that garden of dreams meditation. It's really beautiful. Great. Hundreds, hundreds of women. The link is below. Get the link. Yes. Thank you. The link is below. So that's the that's the gift from my heart to yours. And then um, there is an organization here in the Monterey Bay part of California. If you know the map of California, San Francisco is here. And then you just come down Highway 1 and here's the Monterey Bay with the world's deepest trench. They haven't even gotten to the bottom of that yet, right? And... There is an organization here called Gathering for Women, and they have literally saved lives during the pandemic. This is for women and their kids only. I'm getting chills talking about this. Um, they give them a hot meal every day, the ability to take a shower, um, free clothes if they're needed, and you know other resources to connect with counseling and possibilities of, you know, maybe getting a house or an apartment or a condo or something like that, education for the kids. I can't say enough about them. They're a, a nonprofit, a 501c3, and I give to them several times a year. What they're doing, their vision for women and kids is just so large. And, you know, they must have a force of about 40 or 50 women who strictly volunteer their time to help help these women who don't have homes anymore for whatever reasons. And they've got kids. Can you imagine? And the rain and the storms we've had and the trees falling and they they are they're just the the shepherds really and, and the healers on this physical, emotional, spiritual level. Gathering for Women. So I included the link that is the direct link to their donation page. 
But you can, of course, go look and read about the amazing things that they're doing. Okay. Wow. Wow, the link and information for both of those is below everybody, as well right. as the the online course, Unstoppable. Oh my goodness, Beth, so full, so much. There's just, mm -hmm. I just feel, wow, you know, to yeah. the net of power, that net of power, what a beautiful thing to bring into this because everything you've spoken about, just is that, you know, it's, and this is so critical because it's easy for us to move into this fear of it's yeah. just me by myself. I'm isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel very separate. Nobody understands me or I haven't got any friends. I know a lot of people feel very isolated or yes. lonely at this time. Yes, and this is just what you're talking about and sharing just reinstates that we are part of something so vast and we can't get away from it. You know, we can't sort of get out the scissors and cut us off because it's we're so in, intertwined with it. So let's reach out. And you started by, you know, doing this. Yes. And what a lovely way just to poof, feel in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We're never we're never alone. Michael Harner, the shaman who I did the longest training with, I was on the faculty of the Foundation for Shamanic Studies. Wow. He wrote a beautiful essay and he would always remind us, we are never alone. There are helping spirits everywhere around us. We've talked about the power animals who I would love to, you know, share with everybody how to get in touch with that. We also have these teachers, these spirit allies in the shamanic upper world. We are surrounded by the spirits of nature and the spirits of the place right where we live. We are never alone. Mm -hmm. It's all around us. We just have to make the choice. I'm going to get connected, baby. <laughs> I'm going to get connected. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Beth, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming and, and speaking about this and sharing it and taking us into that space and just all of these possibilities. It's been yeah. truly wonderful. And everyone remember all of the information and links below. Just fabulous. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you so much, Alison, for your incredible work in the world. And just thank you to every person who's watching this, and I encourage you, don't just let this be, oh, that was incredible, that was a peak experience, oh, Beth, you know, what a shamanic practitioner, oh, oh her international best-selling book, short, sweet, and sacred, oh, Allison in the Pyrenees, oh. no, bring it home. Right now, I invite you to do one thing, and that is just jot down on a piece of paper a simple action step. We call it baby step that you can do, that you would love to do, that moves you one step toward whatever your mission is here on the planet, something you've always wanted to do. Maybe you've wanted to write a book. So you're going to write down just a few ideas of what could be in that book. Or maybe it's like the cairn. Okay, t tomorrow I'm going out and I'm going to get some rocks or I'm going to get those five rocks. Just, you know, send me an email if you want to. Let's keep this stream going. If you want to let me know what your action step is, I would love to hear it. And tell me, where are you in the world doing this action step? I do this with my vision questers. I say, okay, what's your commitment? Well, I'm going to do this death lodge by Saturday. Will you email me and tell me? You bet I will. So I'm your partner in believing here, all right? Let me know how is it going? What's your baby step that you did? Not just what you're going to do, but that you did it, right? This is how we create, this is the wild earth activism here, right? Mm -hmm. We take a baby step. It's not just Allison, oh, Allison, oh, Allison on the mountain and oh, Beth. We're not gurus. We're just saying, hey, here's these things. What's one thing you'd love to do? And this is how we create real transformation and real healing. You are part of that. You're part of that net of power. I'm counting on you. 
to do one action step, please, wherever you are, India, Peru, California, Iowa, Alaska, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, France. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sweet, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.